quick question from you, from Boy Green, Connor. Two less talked about people, Kinlaw and Ruckert. What are your expectations for them this season? They are, you're right. They're not talked about very often. Kinlaw, to me, is an interesting one because if he could stay healthy and start to actually build some seasons together, this is a good place for him with a coach that he's comfortable with. I mean, he was drafted in the first round in 2020 for a reason, right? I, I don't think he's ever going to be this game-wrecking presence that San Francisco took him in the first round, hoping for him to be. But when you just look at the physical tools he has, it's about health and development. If Kinlaw can be an average starter, that's a massive, massive win for the Jets. He just, I always get concerned about guys that are, you know, historically really banged up. And he he suited up for 17 games last year. But the two years combined before that, he suited up for 10, over two years. That's that's really, really tough. Now, Rucker, Rucker's interesting for a lot of reasons. And that's because the tight end depth chart didn't change, which tells you that, I mean, we know Conklin, Conklin's going to get a lot of targets this year. That's not really an interesting topic. To me, what's interesting is how heavy this team wants to play. And when they run 12 personnel, how they use Rucker because Rucker is a really, really good blocker on the move. And when you start to run some different concepts with Brees, how do you factor in Rucker's athleticism? Rucker, in my opinion, is miles ahead of Tyler Conklin as a blocker, but Conklin's yes, a proven I pass agree. catcher in this league. And that's like, there's something to be said about that at tight end. So I actually think they have some balance and they like you Boa a lot more than people like they really like you Boa. There's a reason he's hung around here this long. So for me with Rucker, I have two thoughts with Rucker. One, he should be the next tight end up now in 12 personnel, which he's been better than Uzama for a year. So it, it makes you bang your head on the table that he wasn't all the time because he's he's a good complement to Conklin. And then two, I do wonder, I know Bauden is still on the roster and I know I had the same exact rant almost this time last year, but if you're going to only run a look with a fullback not even every week, but like a handful of times a month. I know he plays special teams, but like bought on the roster when Rucker could just be a lead blocker. I, I don't, that doesn't make a lot of, that's not good roster. Gymnastics Give us H back Rucker. How much are we going to talk about this? How much longer can we discuss it? Just right. Do and it, hack it. Well, I feel like it kind of comes to a head this year because you drafted two running backs this year. So now we think they're keeping hall Braylon Allen probably going to keep Isaiah Davis. He just drafted yep. him. And I don't think they just want to throw a band of Canada to the, like just cut him after all this. So are you keeping Bauden on top of that when Rucker could probably do that job? I, I think there's a lot of snaps on the table for, for Rucker. And it, the season will go like this. The Jets, the first month of the season, there will be more Tyler Conklin than the opposition initially expected because Mike Williams won't be a hundred percent yet. So this pass offense will be funneled through Garrett Wilson and Tyler Conklin. And as teams start to pivot and adjust to that and the Jets get heavier looks on the field, Rucker will get red zone looks because he simply won't have any attention paid to him. So I'm not saying Rucker's going to be What's that Rucker uh, touchdown over under this year? Three and a half? Hit is that over? Even, I'd be curious what it is set at. If he, he feels like a guy on like a couple misdirection or, or play actions is just kind of floating to the back pylon in the end zone. And he's just wide. Chris up. Baker touchdowns from back in the day. Chris Baker. Saying, uh, who is our, who is our other guy that always flashed? Oh, this one's going to drive me nuts. Could be a year. It, like 2000. He hung around from like 2010 to 2015. Cumberland. Cumberland. Oh, Wow. How could we forget Jeff how, how Cumberland? Hey, that massive that? game on Monday night against the Falcons where he caught a touchdown down the seam from Geno. Yeah, he was always good for like He was on the Jets for 2000, 2010 to 2015, which is crazy. Cumberland was on the Jets for six years. And to be fair, in a three-year span, he did catch 10 touchdowns. Cumberland. Who, he should have been who so could much forget? better was than number, was. Eight, number 85? Yeah, he was like a yeah. converted receiver. Uh, they yeah, got him over to uh, tight end. Yeah, he looked, I will say looked athletic. For, it's um, underdog. We're going to have to work together on some of these uh, higher lowers for the Jets. Rucker, some of the lower ones that you got to dig for. I, I'd say like the safest bet from a target perspective, and we'll do a 
I think a fantasy specific episode at some point. Top three targets in the Jets. It's going to be Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, and Tyler Conklin. I think that's like locked in stone. Uh, I would be shocked if it didn't break out with those being the top three uh, overall. Before we wrap, two quick things. Well, three quick things. One, we do record this on video because I use chunks of it for YouTube and, and social. I was watching my youngest son who snuck in here. He was watching us record and he was working to snap my other laptop in half. So I had to get up while Connor was talking. So I had to take it from him to make sure he didn't snap it in half. Uh, that's that's some parent podcasting that's chaotic. right there. Um, two, Le'Veon Bell, open invite, Badlands podcast. Come on, let's talk gay, Sarah. I know you've seen the tweets. I have so many questions. People. Come on, we'll do an entire hour. On I'll the ask you for 12 minutes, but if he wants to do an hour, I have we'll more go, than enough questions. We'll talk the free agency. We'll talk the albums. We'll talk your boxing career, but we got to talk Gase. We, we'll add it as like a bonus to the original 10-part docuseries. Uh, so, so come on down. Now, we also got – I want to save this for next week. We'll drop it 4th of July uh, extended weekend so you can listen to it as you're enjoying some beers in America and the sun. Basically, I got a question to sort of like rehash our predictions for 2022 and 2023. So I'm going to come prepared for that uh, next week. And we're going to go through what we've predicted in recent years for the Jets and what we got right, what we got wrong from a record perspective. I do also want to shout out other guys this week. They had a great format uh, of buying or building your own Jets offense. They're going to do defense next week, I hope, where basically, and this is a popular Instagram format, I'm sure plenty of people have seen before where you have $15 to work with and they have five different categories, quarterback, running back, receiver, two receivers and coach. Jake, 